God bless you. We bring you greetings in the most holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to move swiftly into the word of God for today. Yes. We're going to start in the book of Romans, the third chapter. Romans chapter 3, starting at verse 3. Yes. For what if some did not believe? There Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thou saying, and mightest overcome when thou art judge. Now, when we look at God's word, it's always going to be some that's going to challenge God's word. So God is telling us, what if some do not believe? What should be your position? What should be your stand? And not only if some would not believe, there's going to be people that's going to move away from what they once believed. How do you respond to that? Do you, praise God, go astray with them? Praise God. When you are firm in God's word and fully persuaded, and that's what we're looking at, being fully persuaded, amen, you will not budge. When people change, they just change their position. You don't change with them. There's people going to tell you, I used to believe that way, but now I believe this way. Well, a lot of times when they say that, uh, they're going contrary to the word of God. I, I always challenge people when they do that. When they say, I used to believe this way, but now I believe this is how I believe now. And I'll say to them, say, well, give me some scripture to support the way you believe. Because a lot of times they're going up against foundational scriptures. They're saying something that really doesn't make sense, but what's going on is that we're living in a time where people will come against the Bible. And they're going to try to rewrite the Bible. They're going to try to, amen, move us away from the foundation of the Bible. Things that we've been holding on and holding dear to our hearts for centuries past and generations past, they're going to come against that. But we got to stand firm because we got to know what time we're in. This is the last days where people would challenge the word of God like it's never been challenged before. But what they're showing is that they are moving into darkness and some into gross darkness. They're moving away from the truth and moving towards error. And that will support their sins and their transgressions that they have chose to live uh, and be a part of. The reason why the word of God doesn't really uh, fit their, let's say, their belief system is because they're living a life contrary to the word of God. So when you listen to what people say, don't just consider what they say, but consider the source. Consider the source. People coming to me say they don't believe the Bible, I don't believe the Bible, but you're living in fornication, you're living in adultery. Of course you're not going to believe the Bible. Or I don't understand, I, I don't believe that's the way it is, whatever. Well, you, you, you're coming to a place where you're trying to contradict the Bible because there's a contradiction in your understanding. The Bible is the Bible. It will never change. The word of God is true. It's forever settled in heaven. When people turn against the Bible, you need to check their lifestyles. You need to check, amen, their position and status in life. And you'll find out that they live in a life unworthy. So they're offended by the Bible. So then they'll say, we don't believe that way. Then there's uh, just people that just lack uh, understanding. And sometimes they lose hope and trust in the Bible because of a lack of understanding. Even when people go through situations and circumstances, they will begin to blame God. Or they begin to say, I can't believe that because if that was true, I wouldn't be dealing with this. Well, you have to align yourself with the word. The word is not going to align itself with you. You have to align yourself with God. God's not going to change his position for you. God's word is absolute. It'll always be the same. No matter who believes, who don't believe. But believing is when you're fully persuaded. When you believe something. It's not just believing. But when you, when you look at uh, a, a believing period... You're looking at a place where you are persuaded or convinced. Then we look at this as being belief. You're fully persuaded. Let's go to Isaiah. Amen. We'll see that a little more clear in Isaiah 53rd chapter. Um, 
about Zen. Yes. Then we're going to come back to Romans, also uh, the fourth chapter. But it's, it's for God's Isaiah for us. Isaiah 53, starting at verse 1. Who has believed our report? Now, who has believed is simply saying who is fully persuaded that the word of God is true? Who is convinced that the word of God is true? That's why we're calling this message fully persuaded. When you believe something, then it doesn't matter the conditions and circumstances that you're facing. What you believe will outweigh your, your conditions and your circumstances. When you believe something. Your belief is not, should not be based on circumstances or situations. But your belief excels and, 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 uh, and surpasses your situation and your circumstances. So Isaiah said, who has believed our report? Because he knows that there'll be some that was not going to believe. That's why the Bible says, what if some do not believe? Should I make the word of God in an effect? That's not going to change God's word. God's word is still going to stand whether you believe it or not. It will be fulfilled whether you believe it or not. Prophecies uh, foretold will be fulfilled whether people trust in them or not. So then it's not based on circumstances. God's word will surpass that. And your faith in God's word, your belief surpasses all of those things. You don't need things to be aligned in order for you to believe. You don't need everything to be perfect, picture perfect, in order for you to believe that the outcome will be to the glory of God. Amen. So listen to Isaiah. Who has believed our report? Yes. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Well, when we look at the arm of the Lord, it's God's power. It's, it's a symbolism of God's power. The arm of the Lord. When you believe then you experience God's power. God reveals his power to those that's thoroughly convinced that what he's saying is true. Then God, believe, then God will reveal his power to them. Those that are convinced that the word of God is true, God will reveal his power to them. So Isaiah said, who has believed our report? The one that believed to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord of the power of God is revealed to those that believe. Praise God. Is this that simple? This is that simple. So once you believe, then you experience God's power. That's whom God's going to reveal his arm to, his power to. To the one that believes. The one that's persuaded and fully convinced that God's word is true, regardless of the circumstance, the situation. Because circumstances and situations don't change God, but God changes circumstances and situations. Praise God. Hallelujah. So don't worry about the circumstance. It's like when Jesus, praise God, was called upon to go visit Lazarus when he was sick. And Jesus took his sweet time. By the time Jesus got to the man, he was dead. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> well, Martha and Mary was looking at the circumstance. Jesus was looking at the fact that circumstances don't change God. But God changes circumstances and situations. And they even said, if you had been here, because here's the circumstance... Here's the situation. If you had been here, he would have lived. And he told his apostles, I'm going to go down there to wake him up. And they said, if he sleep, he do well. Because see, when you, speak, when you speak of God's power, you make light of what the devil has done. You make light of the situation. Jesus said he was asleep because he was making light of the situation. The man was dead. And the apostles say, if he sleep, he do well. But well, Jesus realized they didn't understand the language of faith. Because what faith does, it never magnifies the situation. But it magnifies God and it will minimize the situation by the words used. When you blow the situation up, you just minimize God. 
But when you minimize the situation, then you're about to magnify your God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You take what the devil blows up and make big and make little of it. Because you know what God can do. That's why he said that he sleepeth. You know what he was doing, right? He was making, minimizing the situation. But when the apostles didn't understand the language of Christ, then the response was, he's dead because y'all not catching him. He's dead. And he told them, I'm glad that he's dead for your sake. That you may see what? The glory of God. The power of God. Because here come the arm of the Lord because somebody what? Believe. That God can change a situation even after death. That it's still not the end. God still can move when everybody else gave up. And then he raised Lazarus from the dead. Then he raised now, now, you could be praying for somebody. Went to the hospital to see them. They, they, they just died. Most of us were counted a done deal. We're preparing for the funeral now. How many people would even think about raising that person from the dead? Because you're looking at circumstances and you're looking at situations. But you're not looking at God's power and his word. What needs to be is that somebody stop and pray, Lord, do you want to raise this man back from the dead? Praise God. And it's good to pray that. Why? Because you don't know whether God has finalized the situation. Maybe this is the end for this person. Or maybe this is an opportunity for God to be glorified by the raising of the dead. But we still need to pray. We still need to pray to get an answer from God. Because we know you can do it, Father. We know you can do it. We just want to make sure it's your will. So that we operate within your will and not in our own will. But if you give me the green light, I'm going to go down there and call them back from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to wake him up as Jesus says he's only sleeping. I'm saying, Get up in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Rise and shine and give God the glory. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 And scared the weepers. You know, the professional weepers, they, th they take out one of them and see that man come back from the dead. <laughs> Scared them out of town, praise God. Y'all down here, professional weepers, sent to weep at funerals, praise God. But God would disrupt the funeral and raise one from the dead. God's willing to do things if we would believe him for it. If we could be fully persuaded that God is able, he could do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if we just like Mary and Martha, Lord, He's been dead for four days. He's stinking by now. You seem worried about that. That's a done deal. That's toast. It's over. But Jesus is not over. Amen. Jesus is not over. And he raised the man from the dead. And the faith in the words of Christ was so strong that, he could, that Jesus could have went to the graveyard and said, dead, come forth. And everybody would have got up. But because he's only talking to Lazarus, he said, Lazarus, come forth. I put everybody else back to sleep. Praise God. Because he had the power to wake up everybody in that graveyard. But he only called Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And he was raised from the dead. But that's all because fully persuaded and convinced. Believing that God can do. Amen. That God can change circumstances and situations. And that's why he told them, if you remove the stone, you shall see the glory of God. You shall see it. So it, it's, it's, it's where we see through the life of Christ how believing works. How it works. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed or whom is the, arm of the power of God revealed? Now he's going to talk about the life of Christ, but we're going to skip that and come down to the fourth verse, verses four and five. Read that, please. Surely he has borne our griefs, 
carried our sorrows. Now, now there's there's uh, uh, denominations that don't believe that this scripture is talking about one's health being restored. Four and five is talking about one's health being restored. That God will, amen, give you perfect health in place of sickness and disease. There be some that even started off believing and knowing that this was the, this is the truth of God's word and now they have taken a different spin. I've talked to people that believe for years that this scripture means for the healing of your body and now they've taken another position. And that's why God showed me the verse of scripture he showed me. What if some do not believe? I don't want you to change your position, son. What if folk you used to fellowship with now take a different position? What if some do not believe? Would that make the word of God of none effect? I don't care how close they are to you. My word doesn't change. That's what God was saying to me. Amen? Praise God. I still believe, have been believing since God called me into the ministry, that verses 4 and 5 is talking about your health, your physical health. So he says, surely... He has borne our griefs. And what? Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. When you go to the book of Matthew, it translates this as he has carried our sicknesses and bore our diseases. Praise God. Surely. Isaiah is saying, surely he's healed your body. Surely he has made you whole. This is absolute. Surely. He has restored your health. But you must believe. Amen? In order to receive this. Because whoever believed this, they're going to see the power of God. Just that simple. Whoever believes this, they're going to see the arm of the Lord. They're going to see the power of God. It's going to be revealed to them. So surely, now, just in case you miss verse 4, he gets specific in verse 5. Verse 5 and verse 4 is basically 1. Because God make parallel statements for a reason. He's saying the same thing in verse 5 that he said in verse 4. But just in case you missed verse 4, we're going to give you verse 5 so it will be more specific. Give us verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisements of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Now that word healed in Hebrew is rapha. Rapha means cured, made whole. That's what Rapha means. It means healed. It means even restored. Back to the norm. To be restored back to normal. Meaning bringing your body back to its original condition. And when we say original condition, we're looking at what you were initially. When God looks at you initially, he doesn't just look at you when you was born. He looked at Adam because you was in Adam. Initially, your existence began with Adam. Was Adam sick? No. Did Adam have diseases? No. So bringing you back to the normal condition a way the human family first started off with Adam. God is bringing you back. In essence, when we look at being made whole, it is to regain everything that was lost. It's given back to you. When we look at being made whole, it can be also your health, but it can be more than that. But it's definitely touching your health here. It can be everything that you have lost. When, you, when we look at being made whole, it can touch you in every aspect of your life. Every aspect. But in order to attain this, you must be fully persuaded. You must believe. You must be convinced. You must believe. Praise God. You must believe. 
his detour, I'm going to, I'm going to show you something very quickly in the, in the epistle of John. I believe I want second epistle, epistle of John. Uh, when we look at being made whole and what it means to be made whole, let's go to the epistle of John. Um, I believe I want the second epistle of John. Um, when you find the second epistle, you can read that first chapter. I believe that's where we at. Of John, yes. The first chapter, first verse. It's only one chapter, actually. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, not only, but also all they that have unknown the truth. i tell you what, hold, hold for a sec on that. Uh... Let's go to the um, third epistle. I want. I'm sorry, third epistle, and and read uh, verse two of the uh, third epistle. Beloved, I wish above all things. Now watch this. John is speaking by the Spirit of God. When we look at this, this is where you made whole. Whole means it covers everything that concerns you. It covers you. Spiritually, it covers you naturally. It covers everything when you're made whole. It's talking about you from a wholeness sense, not a partial sense. Now, when I look at the book of Isaiah, yes, it's definitely speaking to your health. But Isaiah said, the word, when we look at the word Rapha in Hebrew, it also means to be made whole. And to be made whole would have to touch not just your health, but everything else that's been lost. It's restoring all things that's lost. It's bringing it back to you. Let's listen to what John says to you. But he's saying this by the Spirit of God. I wish above all things. Now, notice this. Above all things. I could wish a lot of things for you. But I wish above all things. If I could grant you anything, above all things I would love for you to have would be this. Go ahead. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. And Hold up. That thou mayest what? Prosper. Because we're going to look at the whole person, even down to your finances, involves your wholeness. Because you're probably stricken, you're not whole. Did you know that? We haven't dealt with you completely, is what I'm saying. We haven't touched your needs completely. Because when we look at a wholeness, that means every need is met concerning you. Praise God. Every need. I wish above all things that you do what? That thou mayest prosper and be in health. Now watch this. So I'm going to touch every need. I want you to be out of poverty. And the end of poverty is prosperity. I want you to prosper. And then I'm still talking about your needs and talking about your wholeness. I want you to prosper and be in good health. Keep reading. Even as thou soul prosperest. Now, if I look at you in a wholeness, I want your soul to prosper. Now I'm looking at eternal life. Because what if, you're, if you prosper naturally and even you have good health naturally, but your soul is in trouble with God? What if you're living a life where you don't even have eternal life then all the other things won't matter. But in order for all of this to matter, for even perfect health to matter, and even prosperity to matter, we need your soul to be saved. We want your soul to prosper. That's why Jesus would say, what if a man gains this whole world and loses his own soul? Because if he gained the whole world and his soul is lost, he's still not whole. He has not been made whole. So prosperity alone won't make you whole. Perfect health won't make you whole. But if you have, amen, uh, salvation, eternal life, and these things, now you're made whole. But God don't want you just to have eternal life, but sick in your body. He don't want you just to have eternal life, but poverty stricken. He wants you to be completely whole. That's why the man of God would say this to him. 
I wish above all things, this is the Spirit of God saying to us, I wish above all things that you prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prosper. And the soul can only pros prosper through salvation and redemption through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? But God is interested in touching you in a wholeness. He wants to deal with you from a wholeness. He wants to cover every need, natural needs as well as spiritual needs. So he deals with the whole person. Because guess what happens when you don't prosper, when you're in the kingdom? Let's say you're saved, sanctified, in the kingdom, but you're poverty stricken. There's no revenue for the kingdom now. Because you don't got no money, you broke. So now the church got to suffer. Because we got people that's not prosperous. Let's say the whole church is not prosperous. Then how do we pay, praise God, amen, uh, for the facilities that we use? Everybody's broke, busted, and disgusted. But they say even sanctified, though. <laughs> and we thank God that you're eternally secured and you're heaven bound. But right now, you're earthly no good. <laughs> we got to suffer, praise God, lack and go through. You know what I mean? God wants you to be whole. Thank God that you're sanctified because that is the ticket to have. To be in the kingdom of God. That is the ticket. Nothing is greater. Nothing is more precious than that. But you can't help nobody. Because you need help yourself, praise God. You're not prospering. You're poverty stricken. But God has put it in his word to let you know he wants you to prosper. I would. God is saying the devil didn't. didn't say the devil would, but God would that you would prosper. And God would that you be in good health. Huh? He would. But all of this is what Isaiah is saying when he says, Rapha. Rapha made whole by his stripes, by his sufferings. We was Rapha, we was made whole, we was made complete in him. Everything that we lack, everything we lost now has been regained through Jesus, through all of his sufferings. We have regained everything that the devil took away from us, from our health to our prosperity to our very redemption of our souls. Rafa, you've been made whole. Rafa. That's what Isaiah was saying. Amen. And he said, who can believe? Or who believe, uh, 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 you know, who has believed our report? Who is convinced? Who is fully persuaded that what God has spoken, he has spoken on my behalf. This is for me. Praise God. With the sufferings of Jesus Christ, I am Rapha. I am made whole. I am complete. I have everything I need from the standpoint of my health being restored, to my finances being restored, to my very soul being restored through the redemption of Jesus Christ that he provided for us. Everything has been restored. Everything. I need to prosper because Paul writes and tells the church, to lay aside in the, in the beginning of the week or the first day of the week as the Lord has prospered you. Because the church needs your prosperity because the church needs a revenue. Every kingdom needs a revenue. So we need God's people to do what? Prosper. Amen? Because we're not funded. We're not going nowhere. Praise God. Huh? Tell the bill collector you saved, sanctified, on your way to heaven, enjoy the trip. He said, I need you to pay this bill right now, Prince. <laughs> Tell the mortgage company, say, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, praise God. On my way to heaven, enjoying the trip. He said, I need you to pay this house note right now because if you don't pay it, you're going to be saved, sanctified, in foreclosure. <laughs> so we know this is a necessity for us to do what? Prosper. Because we can't take care of our needs nor the needs of the church. If we don't do what? Prosper. So anybody that comes against the idea of people
being able to have the needs met is temporarily insane. Praise God. <laughs> well, you don't need to talk about prosperity. Yes, we do. But what we want to say about prosperity, prosperity is for those who have denied all ungodliness and worldly lusts to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Prosperity is for those who bow their knees to the Lord Jesus Christ. Prosperity is for those that are willing to submit to God's will and not their own. Prosperity is for those that have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. Prosperity is for them. That's what we want to say about prosperity. It's not about people that just want, to, want everything God can give them but don't want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not for them. Never will be for them. Amen? So we have a balance when we look at prosperity. Because when we look at the Old Testament, God rewarded them for their obedience. In the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, all God is talking about is rewarding Israel for obeying. He said, if you are hearkening, uh, and diligently hearkening unto me, meaning obey me, you shall be blessed going in, blessed going out, blessed in the field, blessed in the basket. What would God do for those that obey the gospel? If he's willing to bless Israel for obeying the Mosaic law, what will he do for those that obey the gospel of Jesus Christ? You should be blessed going in. You should be blessed coming out. You should be blessed in the field. You should be blessed in the basket because you have denied all ungodliness and worldly lusts to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Surely you should be blessed. Praise God. Surely. So let's move on. Um, we'll move swiftly into God's word. Let's look at the, uh, let's look at the eighth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Yes. Let's see, see what we got here. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. For ye know the grace of our, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, everything going back to what Jesus have accomplished, Isaiah did it when Isaiah talked about his wounds and his, his bruises. And then Isaiah talks about even the punishment that he received was for our peace. Everything is about what Jesus have done to bring back everything that was lost to us. To restore everything that we lost. Because as long as we was in harmony with God, every need was met. We didn't lack nothing as long as we was in harmony with God. And now that we've been brought back into harmony with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, everything has been restored. And we need to lay claim on what comes with following Jesus. What comes with following Jesus. So now, here Paul writes, you know the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Go ahead. For ye know the grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Now, we know he's talking naturally because Jesus was never poor spiritually. So if Jesus became poor... He was, could only be poor in the natural because he was definitely rich spiritually. He was never poor on a spiritual level, but he certainly was poor on a natural level. Born in a man, how poor can you get? Then you praise God in his ministry. He said that the birds have nests and the foxes have holes, but the son of man has not a place to lay his head. How poor can you get, praise God? But he was tasting poverty that you may taste wealth in your obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he told the Corinthian church that you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not saying everybody knows this, but you know this. Why? Because they benefited from it. You know the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ. How that he was, amen, uh, rich became poor for our sake. That we, through his poverty, might become rich. Praise God. They benefited from it. And we see that in Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 4 and 8. Read that. If anybody understood this, the Corinthian church did what Paul was saying. When he said, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. They knew 
that what Jesus had to undergo was so that they could be restored from poverty to prosperity. That he became poor that they may become rich. They understood this. Everybody didn't. Some didn't even believe this. But the Corinthian church certainly did. They certainly did. So now we're going to see their belief displayed because they believed this. This is how it turned out for them. Yes. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. Poverty is gone. You are full. You are what? Rich. rich. And why are they rich? Because Jesus suffered poverty that they might be made what? Rich. You don't have to apologize for, for God blessing you. Apologize to the devil's kids and, 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 and feel sorry that you have things that came through your, your, your submission and obedience to Christ. Look at them, them church folk. Look at them, all of them driving nice, fine cars, living in fine homes. They're just a bunch of hypocrites. <laughs> well, they mad. Because the, 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 the wicked is grieved at the prosperity of the righteous. The devil's mad and the devil's in them. And, they, and the devil's talking to them. <laughs> they all upset. Yeah, they just, just taking advantage of people over there. That's why they're all doing good. No, because we obeyed the gospel. And as Isaiah said in another place, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land, praise God. We're just eating the good of the land right now because we are willing and obedient to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we're eating the fat of the land, praise God. Hallelujah. We're eating all that the land can offer us. We're eating it because of our obedience. We have denied all ungodliness and worldly lust. We have bowed our knees to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, we are now are living, amen, the life that he ordained us to have because he, he was poverty stricken that we may taste and partake of wealth. He became poor that we may become rich. And now it's fulfilled. Now it's fulfilled. Everybody can't see it. Everybody's not going to believe it. But what if some do not believe? Is that going to change what God said in his word? Would that make the word of God another effect? Well, we need saints to prosper. We need them to have abundance of supply because we need kingdom builders. We need people that can give to the kingdom of God and build God's kingdom and make God's kingdom the greatest kingdom on earth, which is the body of Christ. We want God's kids looking real good because they decided to, to follow not the ways of the world, but the Lord Jesus Christ. And why the world is angry about it, praise God, we're celebrating the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Praise God. God didn't make us rich for ourselves, but he made us rich so we can take care of the body of Christ. He didn't make us rich so we can have self-gain. He made us rich so we can have kingdom gain. So the kingdom can gain. So the gospel can be preached throughout the four corners of the earth so we can fund all of those that's going into foreign lands that's preaching the gospel in places that a lot of folk don't even want to go. He had, praise God, built us up financially so that we can be, praise God, ready to give to every good work. So when someone say we need some funding, oh, we're sending it right to you, praise God. Hallelujah, you decide to go down into Asia to preach the gospel. We Don't worry, the saints are sending Money your way, praise God. We, get, we are kingdom, praise God, builders and kingdom funders. We are send money everywhere where the gospel can be preached. Because it's not about self-gain. It's about kingdom gain. And, and God prospered us, not for us, but for the sake of the kingdom. So that the kingdom can, praise God, prosper in the earth. And every time we think to do something to bring glory to God, we have funding for it. We'll build relief centers. Praise God, inviting precious souls that have met with the grossest mis misfortune to come in and, and we'll take care of you. But the only deal we'll have with you is that you're going to have to give your life to Jesus, though. We ain't going to take care of you. You're going to live for the devil. 
You had to live for Jesus. Or oh, we'll help you all the way. We'll help you get yourself together. We'll take care of you, your kids, your family, or whatever else you need to be taken care of if you serve Jesus. Praise God, if you serve Jesus. But I'm not, I'm not, praise God, obligated to those that spit on this gospel. I ain't helping nobody that's a blasphemer. Let the devil help you. That's who you're serving. <laughs> if you speak against this gospel, I don't owe you nothing, not even a penny. But if you're willing to bow your knees to the Lord Jesus Christ, I empty both packets for you. Praise God. Because anybody that want to serve my Lord, they're willing of all that you could possibly give them. That's why God prospered me. So I could give that way. Amen. Praise God. Radio, TV, as long as you're preaching the gospel, we'll fund you. Praise God. We ain't funding no nonsense. But if you're preaching the gospel and souls are being saved through your ministry, we'll fund you every time. We'll send money in that's unreal. Praise God. We'll send so much to you. But that's why God prospered us. So we can bless the kingdom of God. And the work of God can continue on. But keep reading. We, 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 we want to show you something here. Yes. Now ye are full. Now ye are rich. You are full. This is where God wants us to be. And you are rich. That means every need is met. You're full. Your cup is running over. And you are rich. Go ahead. Ye has reigned as kings you without are, us. Now to show you the measure of their prosperity, they have reigned as what? Kings. Praise God. You think they didn't understand what Paul was saying when he said, you know the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? They were partakers of it. That's why I say, you know. I didn't say everybody know. Some folk don't even believe this. Some folk think all church people is about is money. No, we're about the kingdom being established in the earth. And he told Israel, praise God, that it is he that gives the power to get wealth so that the covenant can be established. God don't just give. He gives so that he can establish his word in the earth. That's why he gives to his people. He gives to his people that we can have places where we can house souls for the kingdom. Where we become the biggest relief center on earth. But the catch is, when you come to the door, we're going to invite you to Jesus. If you don't want Jesus, we've got an exit for you too. You need to get out of here, praise God. <laughs> We ain't taking care of folk that want to live in sin, live in adultery, live in fornication. But if you want to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust, we will take care of you. To follow the Lord Jesus Christ, we will cer certainly take care of you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We teach uh, 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 young mothers how to raise their children, but we're also going to teach them not to fornicate and get married. Praise God. Hallelujah. We'll put them on the right path through funding. That will come to kingdom builders. Amen? Because that's what you are when you give to the kingdom. You're a kingdom builder. You're not just a giver. You're a kingdom builder. Amen. Let's move on. Let's, let's, let's close in the book of Romans. we we'll probably have a part two to this message. Romans, fourth chapter. Amen. We're going to pick it up at the... Um, 17. Yeah. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Now watch this now. Abraham had to believe something that haven't materialized yet. That's how the word of God is given to you first. You don't see it first before your natural eyes. But you receive it in the spirit that is so because God said so. Amen. God would tell you that your health has been restored before you can see it with your eyes. But you're going to say it's so because God said so. Rafa, Rafa, I've been made whole. Can't see it yet, but I've been made whole, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's going to manifest because the word said so. And I'm in agreement with God. I don't need no other partner but God. Two touching and agreeing on earth, it shall be given. I got God and I got myself. We're going to stand together on this thing. I'm in agreement with God that his word is so. And it will manifest because God said so. And because I'm persuaded, fully persuaded, and convinced, praise God. I believe, praise God. Hallelujah, I believe. 
I'm fully persuaded. I'm fully convinced because I believe. Yes, keep reading. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. That's the promise. The promise always give you a forecast before you see it. It's like telling you it's going to rain, but you don't see the rain yet. It's telling you that snow is about to appear, but you haven't seen it yet. It's a forecast to tell you what God is, 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 has given you before you see it. But you got to be fully persuaded when God begins to speak to you. That what God said, he's, he's able to perform, praise God. Because God said so. Oh, I can look at, and you can look at sickness and say, my body is made whole, praise God. I'm fully recovered in the name of Jesus Christ. Because God said so. I can look at poverty and say, oh no, I prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Poverty has come to an end. Because God said so. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we know in the beginning of our walk with the Lord is all about the salvation of our soul. When you call upon the Lord for the salvation of your soul, you had to count the work done because Jesus already hung on the cross. Died for your sins way before you came into existence. So you had to accept a sacrifice already made because God said so. Praise God. And salvation begins. Eternal life begins. And then your walk with God begins. Because once salvation takes place for the soul, now God begins to show you other things that you lack. Or you're lacking in your health, I'm going to restore that. It's already restored according to the word. Or you're lacking in your finances, I'm going to restore that. It's already, already given in the word. And once you find a word for what you're dealing with, then you become fully persuaded that what God has promised, he's able to do. Now I'm waiting for the manifestation because God said so. It's already done, but I need it to be manifest. My faith is going to get me there because I'm fully persuaded and I'm convinced that it's going to manifest because God said so. Keep reading. Who against hope believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, when, so when, shall thou see be. When you believe in hope against hope, when they, when that, meaning you're in a situation that seems hopeless. But against hope, meaning there's no hope to be found, according to your eyes, that is. You believe in hope. That means you believe God's word. That means you place God's word above the condition and above the circumstance. And you're saying because God said so, it is. Not my body. My body, praise God, could be telling me something else. But God's word said, praise God. Amen. Or you're in a situation found out speaking and as far as what your bank account is saying is you don't see nothing in the bank account but God said praise God Hallelujah. God told me to say I'm rich not poor God said it to, to say that I'm healed not sick because God said so he goes back to Isaiah again who has believed my report God already said it he just wants you to believe it and God has already covered it by his word. His word has already met your needs. Your needs are already met by God's word. But once you stand on the word, then it must manifest. Because God said so. And he also promised that his word would not return unto him void. All you need is a word from God. You already got it right here. Isaiah gave it to you, praise God. Don't look for it no more, praise God. Isaiah say, Rapha, Rapha, you made whole. Everything has been restored. Everything lost has been regained. Rapha, Rapha, can you receive that though? Praise God. Can you believe it? Praise God. <laughs> praise God. Isaiah said, who has believed my report? Praise God. I'm giving a report right now. Praise God. And, and to whom is the power of God revealed? Praise God. I'm telling you, Rapha, Rapha, all things have been restored. You are made whole. All things have been restored. All that was lost has been given back to you. Will you receive it? Who has believed? Who is fully persuaded? Who is convinced of what I'm saying right now? Praise God. Rapha, Rapha. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
almost sound like the message should be named Rafa, but we're going to leave it as fully persuaded. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is telling you it's already done. It's already done. He called Abraham a father because it was already done in the mind of God. I just need you to believe in Abraham, though you have not a child to show for it. Praise God, I'm calling you father. In fact, I'm, 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 I'm going to finalize this thing in your mind, praise God. You is called Abraham, I'm calling you Abraham, which means father. Every time you tell somebody your name, they be calling you father, but where's your child? Every time you said Abraham, you said father. I don't know where it is. Praise God. Because God said, that's how sure this thing is. It's soundproof. Because when I speak, praise God, it is soundproof. It must and will manifest because I said so. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and finish, finish up. I'm sorry. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body was now dead. Watch this. You can't consider what your eyes see when God said something to you. Because your eyes may contradict what God is saying. He considered not. There's always something not to consider when God is speaking. There's always something not to consider. Well, you're poverty stricken. Don't consider that. Because God said you're rich. <laughs> oh, you're sick in body. Don't consider that. Because God said you're healed. He said that you're cured. He said that you're made whole. You can't consider when God is speaking everything that your eyes see or what your five senses tell you. Because faith a lot of times will contradict your five senses. I remember a pastor was ready to be operated on. It looked like he either had a tumor or some type of something in it was seemed like some type of tumor or something in his body because he didn't give all the details, but they was going to cut it out, whatever it was. And before he went into the operation, he said, can I pray? And the doctor said, what good is that going to do? <laughs> you holding me up. It's not operate first, doctor. Can I pray first? And then I want you to look again. The doctor like, man, you wasting my time. Because we've already seen this. It's been there for years. And the man got on his knees and started praying. Got up off his knees and said, doctor, checked again. Doctor, check one more time. Doctor, checks. I don't know what happened, but it's not there. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You have to know that God's word will overpower situations and circumstances, and it will change. It will amaze doctors, and they will be astonished by what they will see. That's when somebody is convinced and persuaded. They'll get the manifestation. Amen? They'll get it. The doctor, before you put that knife on me, you may want to check again, praise God. Hallelujah. But most saints would say, go ahead and go over the operation. I've already had everybody praying that it'd be a success. <laughs> <We're> not, <laughs> what about this praying that you don't have the operation, <laughs> praise God? That the man looking can't find what he's looking for because God has removed it. Praise God. But now the faith is in the doctor. Once you say it's pray for the opera, you, you, you may not admit it, but your faith is in the doctor right now. Let's pray he don't thumble. He don't, you know, mess up. But why go through that? This brother said, let me pray first. Then check. And after he finished praying, the power of God was revealed. Amen. He must believe. Hallelujah. Go ahead, finish up. Yes. So, being, being fully persuaded, he's not even going to consider his body, Abraham. Let's read that verse. Stop. Read that verse. And being again. not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now. Being dead. not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Because listen, he's got to believe God. In order to believe God, you can't consider your body at this point. You got to consider God's word. His body, what he see with his eyes is not going to be what he can rest in. He has to rest in God's word. So consider not his own body being what? When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't consider that he was too old to do what God was saying was going to happen, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. So he had to bypass all logic. 
He couldn't use logic or reasoning at this point. He only could use what God said. He couldn't even use his intellect at this point. Or his five senses at this point. He would only have to use God's word to get the outcome he was looking for. And that's how we got to be when we grab a hold of what God has spoken. Amen. You cannot consider conditions and circumstances when God has spoken. Because these are conditions and circumstances that Abraham was facing, but he didn't consider it. God's telling you how the man got there, giving us a recipe in how to receive from the hand of the Lord. Amen. You can't consider, and you can't consider your unbelieving neighbors that may tell you, you need to have that operation. <laughs> you, I'm telling you, you got you to cut people off because if folk, you ain't around a faith people, you don't want to talk to your unbelieving neighbors when you believe in God for a miracle. Because somebody would told Abraham, you might as well go ahead and sit down on that one, brother. It ain't happening. Abraham wasn't talking to them. Amen. And there's a whole lot of folk you're going to have to cut off because they're not going to believe God for you. They'll believe the doctor for you. They'll believe the hospital for you. But they ain't going to believe God for you. And even from a financial standpoint, they may not believe. Go ahead. We're going to close. Go ahead. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded. That's what we're going to stop there. All of this showed that he was fully persuaded. When he didn't consider circumstances and situations, he was fully persuaded. When he got beyond himself and all he could see was God, he was fully persuaded. And all he was doing was just believing. Amen. We thank God for his word. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the, omission, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is unto you and unto your children and unto those that are far off. As many as the Lord our God shall call. God bless you.